it's my great pleasure to, to welcome uh, Sonia Schreiner, uh, who is a classicist and neo-Latinist. Uh, she works uh, at the Department of Classical Philology, Medieval and Neo-Latin Studies at the University of Vienna. She's also a member of the cluster, the past for the present. Uh, and uh, she also works at the University of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, she's an amazing colleague, friend, person, and um, uh, she uh, is active um, on many fields of classical studies, but I wish to uh, mention one, uh, which is, uh, I believe, uh, a future of uh, our discipline. So um, this very demanding but also important uh, frontier between the classics and human animal studies. And uh, Sonia has co-authored uh, two path-breaking handbooks um, that are in open access, uh, where uh, she and her colleagues uh, show how we could uh, base on uh, Latin, on uh, classical literature, to help uh, students uh, at various stages, um, at the various levels of their education, uh, to think of uh, the relationships between uh, human and animals in a new way, in a way that is uh, full of empathy and uh, reciprocal understanding. So uh, you could uh, find the handbooks uh, on the internet. They are also um, they are also um, uh, on our uh, mythical childhood blog so you can you can read them uh, we uh, add uh, the link uh, to the uh, booklet with the abstracts and um, and now uh, sonia uh, will uh, also her, her her inaugural lecture will be uh, within this this uh, amazing framework so uh, sonia will talk today um, on deep in the water and high in the sky, inspiring inclusive and universal aspects of antiquity today in Christoph Ransmeyer and Jesse Sima. So, uh, Sonia, the, the, the Zoom is yours. Thank you very much for, for, uh, for um, giving us your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much, dear Kasia. I, I hope you can hear me well, well and yeah, I, I hope you can see the, the presentation. Um, dear friends, friends and colleagues, being again with you and sharing my thoughts and some literature with you makes my day. It is an honor and a pleasure to open our conference on the broad variety of reception studies. In times when more and more places on our planet are burning, people are hurt and dying, some hours of evasion will give some relief and new strength. Let us dive in the sea and fly up in the sky for 20 or 25 minutes and learn a lesson on tolerance and friendship. If you love music of the 60s, the title of my talk will give you rhythmic memories of Amy Coleman's song High in the Sky. If you are fond of the 80s, Flying High by Opus will have come to your, uh, your mind. And if you are a fan of the 2020s, it is Stevie Gold's Deep in the Waters your ear will resound with. None of these lyrics will be analyzed, but both vertical limits express, according to the title of our meeting, inspiring, inclusive, and universal aspects of antiquity today. I will show how these are realized in a mesmeric booklet by the famous Upper Austrian author Christoph Ransmeyer and in three celebrated picture books by the US American author and illustrator Jesse Singer. What are Ransmeyer's Ladies and Gentlemen Underwater about? The text was published in 2007 by S. Fischer in Frankfurt, comprising approximately 80 pages. In 2009, a special edition was produced by Mandelbaum Publishers in Vienna. The whole stories are read by the author himself. This happened quite a number of years before audible books became a growing trend on the book market. Two compact discs accompanied the booklet, which contains only small snippets of texts. However, they are key pieces to each story. And all stories have a general topic, hydrophobia, maybe even thalassophobia, in any case, fear of water. Highly poetic language, typical for Ansmeyer, on the left. 
describes beautiful photographs taken by Manfred Bakovinger on the right, illustrate and memorable music artfully realized on the trumpet by Franz Haltinger in black and white, accompanies each metamorphosis and sense for the mysteries the newly created animals face in their wet surroundings. Becoming part of the silent underwater world through a mythical process of change means therapy, brings a new quality of life and secures a better existence. The transformation into aquatic animals becomes an effective remedy in every single case. Ransmeyer creates seven protagonists, women and men. They are listed here like dramatis persone, with names, formal functions, and a new aquatic self in German and Latin. Reading these case studies or listening to them shows the ladies and gentlemen's problems which sometimes are severe disorders. Mr. Blüher, who worked as museum guard uh, for more than three decades, is the storyteller and was transformed after a difficult life. Always interested in arts, especially in blue paintings resembling the sea, he protected them in the museum, which was not an easy task, and thereby caused attacks of incontrollable sweating due to his blue uniform, due to nasty tourists, and due to the hydrographs he was actuating heavily sweating all the time. When he, in his new life, understands that the transformation was not punishment, but opens a new field of research to him, any burden becomes a pale memory of former times. Transformation is progress. Now he is a researcher, not a guard. A dream has come true, and he is not sweating any longer. Underwater, he has finally space. However, when he tries to communicate with divers, he writes in a way that is possible for a Kalma with his bunch of arms, as Eo did. Mr. Blue wants to communicate that he is one of them, that he is or was human, but as Inakos and his daughters, the divers do not understand, but give him a name and the place in taxonomy. And this is what Mr. Blue will do with all the aquatic animals that had been human beings, including himself from now on. And so his rather special etymology of Blue has to do with blue, not with bloom. As time goes by, he learns that he is not alone, that others have problems as well, for example, Mr. Reddish, who now is allowed to cross-dress in a world where gender is much more unclear than in his former surroundings, and even more important, where gender can rather easily change. In his human life, he was selling water beds, a business he hated, overthinking of the dramatic consequences of a bursting water bed for whatever reason. In Mr. Blue's understanding, he and Mr. Reddish and some more will be introduced because of their new form, their altered existence and their change of habitat are all put in the center of their most personal fears and anxieties. Now they have to live in water, the, in their opinion, most disgusting element. You hate change? then you are the object of change. This is the central message. Mrs. Orange should fear that the kids she worked with that the women struck that over, now she is a jellyfish, but still protecting other fishes like an umbrella. Mr. Blackthorn was a plumber, but hated water, was a relief to be a fish now. But the torture on earth in the air was even harder than that. As Mr. Blue was sweating, Mr. Blackthorn became incontinent, a major problem that does not matter in his new existence, where nobody will call him Mr. Leaky. At first, Mr. Blue wanted to name him Narcissus, but this would have been against his principle to choose name with a strong connection to color, blue, orange, red, and now black. In addition, Mr. Blue even transforms the spelling of the colorful names as in the case of his own name, um, instead of the uh, common diphthong U, U, and E. And also in the case of the former politician Mrs. Whitey, who cannot completely overcome her human existence and still wants to persuade other crafts. As the Lydian farmers in Uvid's metamorphosis, she still keeps on talking. One we sing subaqua, subaqua, maledita, retemptam. As a minister of fisheries, 
Mrs. Whitey had to defend what she hated most, the sea. This means that Hans Meyer, as soon as in 2007, depicted the sea as an decisive factor for the climate and the ecosystems. Poor beauty queen, Miss Purple Heart, in her new life is an eye-catching fish. She resembles She resembled the little I am me, created by the Austrian writer Mira Lube and illustrated by Susie Beige. No creature is like the little pink being with the long orange ears and the blue hair and tail. She, so she, he, or it proudly declares I am me. The little I am me struggles with being unique and the only one of its kind until it realizes that the others are only interested in more details on its background, that they are curious and want to know to which species it belongs. In the very moment, the little I am me does reveal what it effectively knows about itself. It becomes self-confident and is pleased with its life and happy about its new friends. The Lansman's purple heart is somehow different. Deep in her heart, she cannot accept that she has grown older that her face and body have undergone an absolutely natural transformation on Earth, followed by her metamorphosis into a flamboyant fish, and thereby fails to see that she is still beautiful, putting herself under pressure to justify her phenotype, notoriously repeating, I still am what I have been. And finally, poor Mr. Greenfinch, who was responsible for building huge dams and suffered of being sleepless because he foresaw major catastrophes happening every moment, peacefully lives as fluorescent snail now. Imagine seven people tortured by their daily life, by physical stress or neurotic disorders. Imagine unhappy faces and stiff bodies, listen to their stories and try to feel their ongoing constraints. What did they become after metamorphosis? And here we go, you can see it here. Beautiful animals dwelling in the sea, free of sorrows, rather happy, not only arranged with their new existence, talking to each other by wireless fish talk, as Franz Mayer calls it. You see blue in the upper row, followed by reddish, orange, and black thorn in the second, and whitey, purple heart, and green finish in the third row. I guess Ovid would have been rather pleased with this adaptation nearly two, two decades after Hans Meyer's probably most famous novel, The Last World, where the positive sides of being changed, transformed, metamorphosed, are not so clear and even more mysterious. But there is also a darker side under and between the line of uh, ladies and gentlemen underwater. Franz may ask, this is another theory uttered by Mr. Blüher, if maybe in the future all human beings will transform into submarine beings after the land has become a desert. He asks if there will be another evolution with a better result than before. In addition, Mr. Blüher and his companions in fate Think of all the wars that the Trojan War included and disasters the humans are responsible for. Then, their homesickness, their desire for air in their faces and wind in their hair and soil under their feet vanishes immediately. Jesse Seamus picture books. Not quite normal. Perfectly Pegasus and weathered together forming what the American author and illustrator calls not quite novel and friends, show the positive and invincible force of friendship, tolerance, and harmonious coexistence. The male unicorn kelp and the female winged horse nimbus experience adventures and actively live and enjoy interspecies friendship. Kelp, in the German translation Nori, who has grown up with novels, learns uh, that he can and will have two families, although he is different and belongs to another species. 
The German translation bears the title Das kleine Walhorn, Little Whale Hall, moving um, even a little closer to the old myth of the unicorn told by many ancient and modern authors. But where is the link between the unicorn and the marine mammal? It is a long task, actually a tooth, um, resembling the horn of the mythical unicorn, which time after time was found on the coast of the sea. People could not explain the strange findings the horn was born. Furthermore, the first encounters with Ryan took the place and thereby another unicorn was discovered. The famous Swedish naturalist Carl uh, von Linné coined the scientific term Monodon Monoceros for the novel in the 18th century. I found a lovely picture book of von Linné's for you and we'll put the link to a short YouTube video in the chat after my talk, giving you the chance to get your own impression. You will find some more links to chess in the other books in my abstract. In Cow, Get Out of the Garden, the story of the curious scientist is told in lovely texts and beautiful pictures, including quite a lot of Latin and Greek taxonomy and showing how we revolutionized biology and botany by finding clear categories and standardized denominations. But let's go back to the unicorns and owls and rhinos. On the very last page of Chester Zimmer's book, Kelp meets a rhino telling him that he is a unicorn as well. The story now can go on as Carmen Perpot perpetuum with new protagonists and new interspecies friends. Sadly enough, this is different from the reality white rhinos fit in real life. The last male, Sudam, died in 2018 uh, at an old age. His daughter Nashin and his granddaughter Fatu are the last females of the species. This sculpture in New York symbolizes the end of an era. Interestingly enough, many children's books dealing with fantastic creatures and all real animals inform about species protection on different layers of the text, which brings me to Kelp's name. The little unicorn boy is named after the Kelpie, not the lovely dog, but the fantastic beast known from Northern mythology and from one of the spin-offs of the Harry Potter universe. One of our class specialists on Harry Potter is Anamik. The most famous Kelpie is Nessie. Because the creature is protein, people say nobody managed to find it until now. The magicologist Newt's commander in Fantastic Beasts and where to find them defines the Kelpie as follows. The British and Irish horse demon can take various shapes, so it most often appears as a horse with bulrushes for a mane. International Confederation of Wizard observers uh, realized that they were not dealing with a true serpent when they saw it turn into an otter on the approach of a team of Michael investigators and then transform back into a serpent when it kills Oskili. Throughout Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, Rowling makes very clear that the Michael said it is us are as responsible for species protection as witches and wizards are for the fantastic beasts. The typical, known as the extinct dildo, is the most prominent example, but also the Danny guys, a very special orangutan, shows this very clearly. But again, other than Marianos. In Not Quite Novel, Kelp makes a classic heroic journey, searching for his roots. He finally, after meeting many species and gaining friends, finds his family of origin, a huge yurt of unicorns. For some time he is happy, but quite soon terrible misses his small family. Therefore, he returns and later comes back with them for a reunion of novels and unicorns, joined by all the animals he met on the way. Family is where one feels at home, where one is safe and loved where one belongs to with heart and soul. Jesse Seymour's creation was so successful that uh, an animated series was produced shortly after the book was published, translated, and distributed to many children and adults all over the world. For all interested in more mythical creatures, especially, but not only in wet habitat, these two books, 
improving information, thrilling stories, beautiful illustrations, and another reminder of species protection. Thanks to Michael Schiersdorfer, colleagues and I had the chance to review a whole bunch of literature like this some years ago. We learned a lot and we'll hear more about moments later. Everybody who decides to go on an alphabetical odyssey with uh, the big book edited, written and illustrated by some of our friends and colleagues in the class uh, will widen his or her horizon even more. For example, concerning Pegasus. There will be another special paper on this later today. One of the creatures described in uh, Mythopedia and in the alphabetical abyss is Pegasus. The real one, the Greek one, the son of Poseidon and Medusa. Our Pegasus is female and still a girl. Solitary Nimbus generally likes the sky as a natural habitat but more and more frequently feels terribly alone. Following a fallen star, she by chance gets to know Kelp and his friends and family. Again, it's interesting to have a look at one of the uh, uh, translations here. In this case, the French one. The title is Celeste et l'étoile de l'amitié. I do really like this one. And uh, not only Nimbus is Celeste now, but Kelp is called Navi, qui n'est pas comme les autres. The meaning of the dark cloud, Nimbus' loneliness, being the item um, of little Nimbus' name, has changed as the eternal life. Nimbus, or Celeste, has left the clouds and the rainbows, another very important symbol for tolerance in the book, by the way, but also for the unicorn she will meet soon, because unicorns can produce rainbows with their horns, as we all know from not quite now. Nimbus has also left behind the sky with its glittering constellations being a consolation to her. What a nice wordplay. And now follows the shooting stars, fulfilling her the probably biggest wish she ever had, finding someone who stays with her and who loves her. In the beginning, she only wanted to find the fallen star to fulfill her wish, and Kel promised to help. On their journey, they find out that the star itself is not so important. Being together, being friends, is a real touch. Like Kelp, in the first book of the series, she finally returns to her origin, but will come back with a different attitude towards her old and her new life. She has not long to look for a fallen star to fulfill her deepest desire. Her wish has become true. The constellations, her consolation, Chessy Sima repeats his memorable words, have changed the forms. From Pegasus is only to a herd of interspecies friends, Narvel, Unicorn, and Pegasus. By the way, Pegasus um, has um, transformed not only into Nimbus, um, but also into a Playmobil figurine. Accompanied by the magic princess and her prince using the same spectacles and dark nimble in the book. Upon the Playmobil, Carolina Kurva did a great job on Cleopatra in popular art uh, a while ago, including uh, Playmobil figurines. And there is even another transformation um, of um, the Wind Hall. It has become part of the logo and its trademark. A German company selling pet food, not only for horses, but also for dogs, for example, guarantees with the help of Pegasus that you are only buying the very best for your quadruped uh, friend if you invest into a Pega box. By the way, um, also the, let's say, classical uh, unicorn, the classical uh, unicorn has transformed. Look if this works. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. We'll work in a second. Yes. Uh, but also, um, the unicorn has transformed not only in Kel, but also in Peter Beagle's famous last unicorn, including a red bull that brings the fate of the politics to our minds. In, and in this lovely individual, a rather chubby and curvy unicorn, fond of cookies and thereby 
um, uh, the people against body shaming and the unicorn feeling sick, vomiting a rainbow instead of producing it with its whole scalpers. When I talked about Latin and Greek in veterinary medicine at Children's University last summer, I used this unicorn to explain why a very good plant-based medicine for healing a revolting stomach is called Vomi San, a combination of Vomare and Sanare. But let us for the last time go back to Jesse Sima and her newest book on kelp um, and Nimbus, um, uh, which is called um, Weather Together. Nimbus realized that also cloudy days are worth living, uh, something which was not so clear to her all over her life, um, as you can see here. When she tries to bottle the cloud up, it grows even bigger. Probably she has not read the story of Iolos, otherwise she would have known that her bottle full of clouds is the same box of Pandora and other words can of worms as Iolos sack of winds. Only when, with Caleb's support, she fully understands and learns that clouds, a synonym uh, for bad moods, are a part of one's life, like in uh, the film Inside Out, she manages to better her condition. In the second book of the series, any constellation in the sky was a consolation to her. Now a much better and very strong consolation is her best friend and her self-acceptance. Later today, we will hear a lot about disabilities and how antiquity can help in case of illness, problems or disorder. Weather does not matter any longer, because together everything is easier to overcome. The same is true um, for differences. Looking at everyone and everything with the eyes of the heart as we learn from Antoine de saint Exupéry's famous dictum. To wrap it up, Ransmeyer's texts for adult readers and Seema's stories for the little ones are more than simply good literature. They incorporate art, music, scholarship, and science. Blue, reddish, orange, Blackthorn, whitey, purple heart, green finch, kelp, and nimbus are vivid, creative, and learned representations of how modern adaptations and transformed versions of ancient myth look like, work perfectly well, and sell. Sometimes the illusions are clear, sometimes they are rather hidden, but in all cases, the authors and artists offer inspiring, inclusive, and universal insights in antiquity today, thereby giving hope and joy to all of us. Thank you so much.